Hello everyone, it's Nikki Backerl D'Angelo, and I'm here today to talk to you about my two cents for Invictus Week. So hang on to your hats. We're going to start this one up really quickly. I'm going to do it in two ways. First, I'm going to give you a brief explanation of where I am in my current playthrough, and then we're going to talk about everything cool that's coming in Fleet Week. So I think I'm on day five of starting my playthrough of Star Citizen with my alt character, Cosmic Cat. I'm at just about, just under 500,000 UEC. And I'm going to have a video later on today talking about how I got there and to explain just what the 90k box run is so all of you know that it exists and all of you understand. Well, I'm going to talk about that in that video. But what I'm going to say is I'm having a great time. I've been watching a lot of those videos, like I said, and there's one person I really want to call out that's really changed my outlook on the game again, has showed me that it's still able to wow people that haven't been in it for a while, and what I'm going to point you to is Cobra TV. That's all I'm going to say. You watch his stream, you watch his YouTube, you'll understand. That was quick. That was a quick update, right? So Invictus Week is kind of like other conventions that we've had here in the Star Citizen universe. We're going to see a lot of ships from a lot of different manufacturers, different manufacturers every two days. And in that time, you're going to be able to get around all the displays that are going to be on the convention floor. You're going to be able to go to these huge space docks that are going to be parked above. And I, I believe the three planets that are going to be parked above are Hurston, Arcorp, and Microtech, and they'll be at the planetary landing stations that are just above them. We're going to see one of those in just a few minutes. During that time, there's going to be ship sales, which we should start to see more about tomorrow, exactly what that schedule is going to be. I think we already have some idea what that is now, but I want to do it like a really well-rounded video for this on Friday. So right now, it's just my two cents about what's going to go on. And you're going to be able to rent a lot of different ships in that time. If you're new to Star Citizen, this is the time to get in and play and play around with different ships that you could really start to love so you know exactly what you want to go for once you get in the game. After this video, I'm going to start editing another video that's going to discuss why I don't want you to spend over $65 on a starter package and you're going to love me for it in the end. What I want you to do is to pledge as much money as you want to pledge for the game to help its development and get whatever rewards are given to you for those pledges. But if it's all about the ship, I'm going to show you why buying ships no longer matters in the verse. All right, so Invictus Week is going to be fun. There's going to be flybys by different demonstration teams. I guess it's going to be F-8s that are assigned to the UEE Navy. We haven't seen these things in action. This is going to be our first time seeing them, and people are really starting to wonder, are we going to be able to buy them? I don't have an answer for you. I do have an opinion. I do not believe we're going to be able to purchase the F-8 Lightning. I believe that is still slated to be something that we'll be able to buy after completing the Squadron 42 campaign. And I like having it that way, because it gives us a reason to play that AAA, single-player, amazing title that Chris Roberts and his team over at Cloud Imperium Games are working on. Specifically, I think that's the Manchester group, and you guys rock. So I'm not going to tell anyone to hold their breath for the F8 to be on sale, but what I will tell you is that if it does go on sale, there will be a few upset people. I, I think they'll be upset until they actually start using it, but I think there will be a few upset people. I personally don't think we need another fighter at this time. The way that the game is actually going, having yet another fighter, really doesn't add more to the game. I would rather see salvage or exploration or any one of the other professions really well-rounded out. 
Um, we already have a small and medium size mining ship, maybe a little bit larger ship, one that's in between the Mole and the Orion, maybe that would be good to come out. And we haven't seen anything from Silas Koerner and his group over at Consolidated Outland in a while. I would love to see them start to flesh out the Consolidated Outland ships with other types of vessels and other professions. I think that they would make a great ad addition to something that would compete with the Constellation or maybe something that competes directly with the uh, let, let's put it out there. What's one of my favorite ships? The Cutlass. Something that competes with the Cutlass. That would be awesome. So during this time, we're going to have a lot of people starting to play the game again. You're going to have a lot of people that haven't even joined up over at the Star Citadel well, RSI website and have just joined up for the first time. What I'm going to ask my viewers to do is to welcome them point them to videos of different people that you enjoy watching. Mine, Board Gamers, Young Bloods, um, the, the Mac guys, whoever they are. I forget how, how, the Super Mac guys. Super Mac Brothers, that was them. There's so many people that they should be watching, you know? And get them excited about the game. Point them to my new favorite, Cobra TV. Let them understand what the game's about and what they're going to do. But whatever you do, don't tell them what they absolutely have to buy. And that's going to be because everyone has an opinion. And I was talking to somebody the other day. They had just showed up over at Orison, which is the reclamation yard that's on Hurston that you get. The four boxes that start my 90k box run, which isn't mine. That's been around forever. And he runs up there and somebody had told him to get the Mustang. It's a great ship. He could fight in it. But what he found was... He couldn't do what he can do, which was absolutely to do box missions in the beginning until you get a better ship. So what I'm going to say is, guide the people towards the fun, towards the excitement, and then let them make their own mind up. And, and my reasoning for this is, in my heart, statistic-wise, whatever you want to say, I know the best starship for anybody to get is going to be the Avenger Titan. That, that's just it. I mean, we could fight about it, whatever. I just think it's the most well-rounded, utilitarian ship that somebody could purchase. But for me, knowing that doesn't mean that I want it. I want to fly the 315P because it's gorgeous and I feel like I'm in a more luxurious ship. I have a bathroom. <laughs> Sorry, I have a bathroom. I have a coffee maker, a food maker, you know, food processor. I've got a ship that has personality for me. And the Avenger would probably have personality for somebody else. And I don't look at the person that likes the Avenger as not liking something that's good. I think they're getting a great ship. I think that's a great ship. But I'm going to say this. For the 60 bucks that the Pisces is, the Pisces is a great ship. Because what I want you to think of is the minute anybody new starts the game right now, they're going to buy a ship, and then they're going to go to their hangar for the first time, or go to one of the kiosks to pull out a ship, and what's going to be there? Their ship and a freelancer. They already have that free freelancer. Don't push them above that. Don't tell them they have to get the Cutlass. Don't tell them they have to get the 325A. Don't tell them they have to get the Avenger. Tell them, don't get a ship that's going to limit what you could do in the verse. So stay away from a fighter, like the... Arrow. The Arrow is an amazing ship, but it's not a great starter ship. Don't get the Mustang. I love my Mustang, but it's not a starter ship for me. Don't tell them, get a Reliant Core, a, or core. Don't tell them, get the Titan. Show them the ships that make sense in the beginning. Let them make their choice. <sighs> Sorry, have to sigh after that one. So there's going to be a lot of cool stuff here. As you see, I'm trying on jackets, I'm trying on t-shirts, I'm getting ball caps and stuff. And I think this is wonderful. I think this is one of the better parts of it because we could really buy that cheesy merchandise that we would probably really want in real life anyway and show it off on our character. I do like the way that they're setting the Invictus Week up right now. I think it's awesome. So this Fleet Week is going to be amazing to me. 
I lived in New York for most of my life, and when Fleet Week would happen in New York Harbor, I was giddy. I would run down there, watch the ships come into port, I'd get as many of the tours as I can get, go on the aircraft carrier that would be there. I'm trying to think if one of the ones I was on was the Kitty Hawk or the Forrestal or the JFK. Watch me have just mentioned three ships that were only in the Pacific Fleet, and I didn't say Ranger, which was the one on the Atlantic Fleet. I don't know. I kind of forget. I was young. As I got older, I didn't go to them anymore. I watched them on TV, but I had a rip-roaring time when I was in my late teens and early 20s. I loved it. So there's going to be so much going on. And there's going to be a lot to do. And there's going to be a lot of excitement, and there's going to be a lot of new things that are going to be thrown at you. You are going to see ships that are in production. You are going to see ships that are in production. You may see some as a static display. You may see some in holographic form. And it looks like we're going to see three giant ships at some point that are going to be taking up these giant space stocks. So each one of the planetary space stations just above the three main planets in the system, I want to say four, but Crusader's not done yet. That's the next planetary system. It was our first one, but it's the last one to get the work over Planetary Tech V4, get the space station above it changed out from Port Olisar to whatever is going to be there, and get a nice landing zone, two or three, four, five, or six that are inside the atmosphere of Crusader. We don't have that. But above Arcorp, Virginia Point, I think that's what it's called, above Hurston, Everest Harbor, and above Microtech, which is Port Tressler, or Tressler Space Station, one of those two, it, each one of those is going to have one of these giant docks. And it's hard to show the true scale of these docks without getting out of the ship, EVAing over to them, and just walking around them and experiencing them for yourself. Now I did that and I found out quite a few things. Each one of these docks is going to fit immensely large spacecraft. And obviously we have three of them in mind right now because we know that they've been working on two of them forever. And that's the Javelin and Idris. So I am saying Javelin and Idris are going to be here. And then there's a couple of more. Now one of them is going to really upset me and I'm going to be pissed on my own. And that's, they're probably going to put the Kraken out here. That's, that's just it. They're going to put the Kraken out here. And for me, somebody that bought a $750 ship three, four, five years ago, four years ago, I'm not going to see that ship, which is going to be the Polaris. I wish it was, but the Polaris is not something that's big enough to shove out here. That's more the size of something we already have, like a hammerhead. So here, we're going to see those three ships. And I'm going to say this, basically from walking around these space stations and from seeing them from every angle I could, what I can tell you right now is there's probably going to be a static area, which I'm landing on right now, where we can see the F-8 Lightnings that are going to be performing all of those wonderful flyovers in all the cities, that, in, in all the starter cities. But there are catwalks that ring around each one of these horseshoe-like dock areas. And those catwalks are telling me right off the bat that although these ships are going to be here for us to see, they're going to be here for us to see. Now, there are two gangways over here which led me to believe that they were going to allow us to walk onto the other ships. Now, I have to hope that these are not the finished graphics for this area and then this will truly open up to the ship and allow us on it but in their true in their current configurations I believe they wouldn't have put so many catwalks around the side had all these flags put up everywhere if they were going to actually let us on the ships so I'm not sure what's going to happen I hope I'm wrong but my thought process is that you're only going to be allowed to walk around the ship and see what it's like, and maybe even EVA around it, which would be really, really, really cool. Ah, oh, it's, it's going to be beautiful. The scale of this is just amazing. Now, I played Elite Dangerous forever, and 
being inside the cockpit of a elite dangerous spacecraft it really does take away from the scale that is in that game things are huge and you don't really know that until you play elite dangerous through vr just once but every day that we're in star citizen we have an opportunity to use our two feet to walk around all of this wonderful detailed scenery that CIG has made for us and live in a truly grand, huge universe and experience it in a way that no other game has ever given us. So we do know about an Origin rover that is actually going to be unveiled here. And we had that little ICC uh, teaser a month or two ago. But when you read a little bit about that new Origin Road rover, which I think is the GT-12, I think it is, it talks about something different than the rover I know that's going to be inside of my Ursa. And Oh, see, I'm saying Ursa, but I meant 600i. And I, I read this, and they talk about the ability to be more defensive, have stronger armor, and have a enclosed cockpit that will allow it to be in extreme weather conditions. And it made me start thinking. At first, I thought this was going to be an Ursa-sized rover. But the comparisons to me cryptically are pointing to it being a better tumbral cyclone. The cyclone to me is a recon vehicle. It's the get in and get out quick. It's the we're going to go on a raid in these things. We need some air support. We need some heavy, you know, heavy firepower. We're going to get in these and we're going to go to where we have to go. We're going to get out and we're going to make the assault. The Origin Rover seems to be something that I believe is going to be about 20% larger than that. It's going to have the two size two weapons on the back. I'm not showing you a picture of it here because you could just go on CIG's website for that. I think this images that you're watching right now is better but it's going to have those two size wep two weapons it's going to have armored wheels and i'm just thinking just from what they're saying that it has to fit into things like the valkyrie maybe even the back of a freelancer or fat man you know a fat lancer and and i'm thinking that it would be good to put into my 600i but they're not talking about its scanning capabilities or exploration capabilities they're talking about its defensive and offensive weapons and being able to hold like a landing zone so i'm thinking about something more mobile i'm thinking about something like a armored humvee that's just a little bit bigger so i think right now the cyclones are like 50 is that correct I think they are. I think this is going to be 60 to $70, maybe 60 on Warbond and 70 brand new. And I think this rover is going to be amazing. And I think this rover is made and made quickly because of the weather systems. Because if you are an owner of a cyclone and you use it in a place like Microtech or Calliope or any of the other high heat or, or extreme cold condition planets, your experience using that is diminished by the amount of outerwear or bigger spacesuit like the, no I think it's the Nova, whatever it's called, that that reduces your actual experience using that, that particular rover in that particular area. So I think the Tumble Cyclone is going to be used in places that are more temperate. And I think that the Origin GT GT12 is going to be the one that you want to use in the more extreme weather places. So I'm estimating, because you have to have an enclosed cockpit, about 20% larger, and I'm estimating $60 to $70. Well, there's a lot going on in Fleet Week. We're going to hit it again when we do have an updated um, everything information that we need we're going to do our initial walkthrough of it on friday when i get off of work i'll have that video up by saturday morning you'll probably have a million more before mine but you know i'll have that honest commentary that gives it to you from the layman's point of view 
not from all the technical side, and I'm going to tell you why it matters. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below as it really does help the algorithm get my videos out there to more people so more people can come back and see my videos and know I'm back for good. If you are a subscriber, click that notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. And thank you for those people already helping me out and helping the channel out at patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Batgirl. And if you're not a Patreon yet and you want to do something to help the channel grow, as little as a dollar a month really does help out with paying for the extra bandwidth that I have to get and getting the equipment that I need. This week, I've got a whole bunch of noise canceling tiles coming into this room that I'm going to be putting on the wall and that would never have happened without my current patrons' support. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. With that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.